All right, today in geometry, we're looking at section 7576, the trig ratios. This starts out, a literal translation of trigonometry is triangle measure. A trigonometric function relates one acute angle of a right triangle to the ratio of the lengths of any two sides of the triangle. As we saw yesterday with the 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles, once one angle in a right triangle is known, all right triangles with that same acute angle will be similar. Such consistency allows for the creation of ratios regarding the lengths of the sides of such triangles. Trig functions can operate with either of the two acute angles of a right triangle. A certain labeling is used to refer to the components of these triangles. This labeling is based upon which of the two acute angles is being used in the problem. Before you can use a trig function, you need to have a point of reference from which to work, which is called your reference angle. Think of yourself as standing at the reference angle, the angle that you're using in your problem. You know where the hypotenuse is located. The leg across from you is called the opposite side. And the leftover leg, or the leg next to you, is known as the adjacent side. This will be the leg that you are touching. So in these diagrams, notice down here it tells us that it is customary but not mandatory to use the Greek, the Greek letter theta, and this is its notation, as a label for a reference angle. So notice how the labeling changes when the reference angle location changes. So if I'm using this angle down here, my angle theta is my reference. This is where I stand. This is my opposite side. This is my adjacent side. My hypotenuse is always directly across from the hypotenuse or <clears throat> from the 90. Now, if I change and I make this top angle my reference angle, so this is where I stand, this now becomes my adjacent side. This would become my, hypo my opposite side. My hypotenuse never changes. So now we want to name the ratios. The sine, the cosine, and the tangent ratios are referred to as the trigonometric functions. The sine, S-I-N-E, we abbreviate as S-I-N. We still pronounce it as sine, not sin. The sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The cosine, we abbreviate as C-O-S. The cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And then we have the tangent, which we abbreviate with T-A-N. The tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. The tangent is the only one that does not use the hypotenuse. On the next page, we're going to abbreviate these even more. So, we don't want to have to write out opposite and hypotenuse each time or adjacent and hypotenuse each time. So we're going to abbreviate even more. So the sine of theta, we would say, is the opposite over hypotenuse, O over H. The cosine, we're going to abbreviate to the A over H for adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent is going to be O over A for opposite over adjacent. We have to memorize these. Okay? The trick to do that is to know this word, Sokotoa. So memorize this word, Sokotoa. Okay? The S stands for sine. O opposite H hypotenuse. C stands for cosine. A adjacent H hypotenuse. T is tangent. O opposite A adjacent. I have a lovely story that I'm going to read to you guys about the origination of Sokotoa, but we're going to wait for a few days so that we get some more vocabulary and some more terms out of the way. That way the story will make more sense to you and you will be able to find the humor in the story. So in a few days, I'll read you a story about Sokotoa. It's important to remember that these trig functions okay, only work in right triangles. So our sine, cosine, and tangent ratio, we can only use them in right triangles. So now we're going to talk about how do we set up the diagram. So first, we will draw a diagram depicting the situation if one is not given. So notice over here we have a picture. 
you place the angle inside the triangle. Imagine standing at the reference angle. So if this is the angle they give me, 42 degrees, I'm going to stand down here. I'm going to next label the sides. So from where I'm standing, this is my adjacent side, A. This is my opposite side, O. And this is my hypotenuse. So then I look at what has the problem given me. I have an X with the opposite side, a 25 with the hypotenuse. The A does not have anything with it, so I won't be using the A in this problem. So now to set up the formula, I look at what did I have. I had the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So I go back to Sokotoa, and I look which one has O and H. That's the first one, the S, so that means sine. You will always have an angle after sine, cosine, or tangent. So here's sine A, so I would put sine of 42 because that's what the angle was in this problem. Equals, my opposite side was labeled X, my hypotenuse labeled 25. So this is where we have to talk about our calculators. So <clears throat> first you want to make sure that your calculator is in degree mode, not radian mode. Usually it will say DEG or RAD. You want to make sure that you are in DEG. Then different calculators work differently. Most calculators, you can just type this in directly as it is, sine of 42. When you do that, you should get 0 0.669130 If you don't, then your calculator works different. So then you might try typing in 42, then hit sine. So you just want to become familiar with how does your calculator work. We'll look at solving this problem when we look at the next examples that we're going to do. Okay. All right. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to write Sokotoa at the top of our page. We're going to do that every time to get used to that. And that's going to help us memorize this. Number one, in a right triangle, ABC, triangle C, or sorry, angle C is the right angle. BC is 17. Angle B is 35 degrees. Find BA to the nearest tenth. So first we're going to draw us a picture. Right triangle. They tell me C was my right angle, so it has to be down here. It doesn't matter where I put the A or the B, so I'm just going to put A at the top and B at the bottom. They tell me BC was 17, so that side down here is 17. Angle B, they told me, was 35. Find BA, so that's my X. So I look at, this is my reference angle, this is where I'm standing. I have the adjacent side to where I'm standing and the hypotenuse. So I look up at Sokotoa, adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. So I would write out cosine, always have an angle after here, 35, equals adjacent was marked 17 over hypotenuse was marked X. I must see this ratio. You have to show me this ratio. Okay, this is your work. Now, remember, this is like a proportion. To solve a proportion, we cross multiply. So I would get x times the cosine of 35 equals 17. I'm trying to solve for x, so I need to get rid of the cosine of 35. It's being multiplied, so the opposite is divide. So I divide both sides by the cosine of 35. So what I type in my calculator now is this, 17 divided by the cosine of 35. We're going to round to the nearest tenth. So when I do that, I get x is approximately 20.8. So our answer, our hypotenuse there, is approximately 20.8. Okay, so now we're going to look at number two. This just says write the three trig ratios. If I'm going to write them out, I need all three sides of my triangle. You have options about going about that. So first I could do Pythagorean theorem, right? So I could say 6 squared plus 8 squared equals C squared. 36 plus 64 equals C squared. So this is 100 equals C squared. Take the square root, right? Or I can recognize that this is a triple. A lot of these that we'll be doing will be triples. So 6, 8, 10. So again, now... This is the angle theta that they're giving me, so this is where I'm standing. This is my adjacent. This is my opposite. This is my hypotenuse. So now we want to write out the sine of theta. So I look at the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is 8. Hypotenuse is 10. So this is 8 over 10. 
but I recognize that 8 and 10 both have something in common. So if you can reduce, you always want to reduce. So 8 and 10 have a 2 in common, so this would reduce to 4 fifths. So the sine of theta is 4 fifths. So now we're going to do the cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I go back to where I'm standing. My adjacent is 6. My hypotenuse is still 10. So 6 over 10. But again, I can reduce both of those by 2, so that becomes 3 fifths. And finally, the tangent. So the tangent is opposite over adjacent, so 8 over 6, which again will reduce to 4 over 3. Half of the homework assignment is doing this. So first, find your missing side. Take advantage of, if it's a triple, not having to do Pythagorean theorem. Then label them, okay? And write out the three ratios, sine of theta, four-fifths, cosine, three-fifths, tangent, four-thirds. So depending on the numbers you have in your problem and reduce as much as possible. So if they're asking you to write the trig ratios, you're not really plugging anything into your calculator. You're not solving for anything. The other half of your homework will be the solving. Find the value. When they're asking you to find the value, okay, that's where we're going to have to plug things into our calculator. So I look at, this is the angle they give me, 54. So this is where I'm going to stand. I have my opposite and my adjacent. I do not have the hypotenuse. The only one that does not use the hypotenuse is the tangent. So I would write tangent, always put an angle after this. So 54 equals opposite x over adjacent 10. Cross multiply, I get 10 times the tangent of 54 equals x. x is by itself, so I'm good to just type this into my calculator. 10 times the tangent of 54. When I do, I find that x is approximately 13.8. Let's go to the back. Find the missing side, round in the nearest tenth. First thing we're going to do at the top, write Sokotoa. Come to number one. I'm standing at angle 73. I don't know where all of that just came from. So we're standing at angle 73. I have my opposite and my hypotenuse. So I look up here at Sokotoa, which one has O and H? That's the S. So sine 73 equals 12 over X. Cross multiply X times the sine of 73 equals 12. I'm trying to get x by itself, so divide by the sine of 73. So I type that in my calculator. 12 divided by the sine of 73, and I get x is approximately 12.5. Number 2, 46. This is my angle. I have the adjacent and the opposite. Adjacent and opposite, that's tangent. So I would say the tangent of 46 equals opposite 20 over adjacent x. Cross multiply. x times the tangent of 46 equals 20. Divide by the tangent of 46. So if my variable is in the denominator, I'm going to end up dividing by my trig function. So I type in my calculator 20 divided by the tangent of 46, and I get x is approximately 19.3. Number three, this is my angle down here, 36. I have adjacent and hypotenuse. So that's the cosine. Cosine of 36 equals 13 over x. Let's multiply x times the cosine of 36 equals 13. Divide by the cosine of 36. So when I type that in my calculator, 13 divided by the cosine of 36, I get x is approximately 16.1. Number four, my reference angle is 52. I have the opposite and the hypotenuse. O and H, that's sine. So the sine of 52 is equal to... 10 over x, cross multiply x times the sine of 52 equals 10, divide by the sine of 52, 
So I type in my calculator 10 divided by the sine of 52, and I get x is approximately 12.7. Right, two more examples. So number five, my angle is 70 degrees down here. I have opposite and hypotenuse. Again, that's the sine. Sine of 70 equals 17 over x. Cross multiply x times the sine of 70 equals 17. x by itself, divide by the sine of 70. So I get x is approximately, so 17 divided by the sine of 70 gets me 18.1. And our last example, 54, this is my reference angle. I have the adjacent and the opposite. Again, the only one that does not use the hypotenuse is the tangent. So I'd write tangent of 54 equals 15 over x. Cross multiply x. Times the tangent of 54 equals 15. Get the x by itself. Divide by the tangent of 54. So in our calculator, we are typing in 15 divided by the tangent of 54, and we would get x is approximately 10.9. So that's our first day looking at trig functions using SOHCAHTOA. Your homework is the 7576 ratio and side worksheet. Our next lesson will be finding the angles using our trig functions. So today we focused on finding the sides.